Hey guys, welcome back to Life by the Bow. It's spring, the boating season is upon us, and some of us have already gotten out there, but for those of us that haven't gotten out there and we're getting our boats ready for the season, I'm basically gonna pack this video full of all of the information that I got going on up here based on trailering a boat, maintaining a boat trailer, so that way you guys can get out on the water as easy as possible, and we can always make sure that we're keeping our equipment up to par. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a series of steps to make sure that our trailer is road ready. This is an Ameritrail trailer. It's a top of the line trailer. So first and foremost, we wanna make sure that we're taking care of this trailer and we're preventing any potential failures. And these are our tools of success here as I like to call them. And we're gonna be using these throughout the video. But first and foremost, we have our breaker bar here with the appropriate size socket. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure that all of our lug nuts here are nice and tight. And another advantage of keeping a breaker bar handy with you is say for example, you have a flat tire or you were to have a blowout, you have it here handy, ready to change your lug nuts. So everything seems to be good here. And now we're just gonna move on to the rest of the wheels here. All right, so we just made sure that all of our lug nuts are nice and tight. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check our tire pressure. And reason why is because we wanna make sure that everything is nice and balanced here on this trailer and every single tire is at its designated tire pressure. Um, so right here on the side of the tire, as you can see, but it says this trailer tire needs to be at 65 PSI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew our cap for those of us that don't know. And we're gonna take this tire pressure gauge um, this one is one of the old fashioned ones, but nowadays they make digital ones, but this works just fine for me. And we're just gonna press it right up against here on our valve and right at 65 where it needs to be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the rest of our tires, including our spare. Another thing I suggest, as we were showing earlier, we have like this little stump here, and this is just used to go underneath one of the tires say for example you were to have a blowout or a flat tire you put this in front of the wheel and you pull up and then essentially what it does is it lifts the tire off of the ground um, that you want or would need to change so that just makes things really simple and easy but let's go ahead get this thing hitched up and take off the cover and show you guys how we do that and why we do that So this is a GMC 2500 diesel Denali. Um, it's not necessary for this size boat. You could get away with trailering this size boat with a 1500 no problem, but we also trailer a bigger boat. Um, so having this Pathfinder and this Ameritrail behind the truck makes it feel like there's nothing there essentially. But as you can see, we have the 360 cameras, which is a really nice feature on this truck. And then of course the backup camera I mean, just makes such a big difference when it comes to lining that ball up perfectly on the coupler. I remember the days when I didn't have a backup camera, so, you know, it's just nice every single time getting it perfect, just like that. Everything looks perfect here, and this is something really important that I wanna talk about, and that is our hitch here, specifically. A lot of people, they cheap out on their hitches, but in my opinion, um, it's very important to have a quality hitch on the back of your truck because I've bent steel trailer hitches before. So this one is specifically rated for 22,000 pounds, but we use this one to tow our bigger boat. So it's more than enough for this Pathfinder here. I suggest buying an adjustable hitch like we have here because that's gonna help us to get our trailer as level as possible. And we'll talk about that later on. So. So what happens a lot of the times when you're doing this process, once you line that hitch up to that coupler, once you put the truck in park, sometimes it'll roll forward or roll back, depending on if you're on an incline or a decline. And a way that you can prevent the truck from rolling forward or back once you put it in park is by putting your parking brake on. And that's what I do every single time. That coupler is perfectly on that ball. So we're gonna close this up making sure that this locks all the way down. So we're able to put in the pin. And then what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna give this like a little inspection real quick just to make sure that that's locked on that ball. Everything looks good. Um, so now what we're gonna do 
is we're just gonna pull our jack up all the way. But what's nice is the jack, we can just pull this uh, pin and the rest of the jack just locks up inside of the actual ram here. Now something that I love that Ameritrol does is they put like a little holster here for your trailer lights. So that way this isn't like hanging on the ground there. And uh, a lot of the times these things can get beat up. So it's nice to be able to just have that right there. And then obviously we wanna make sure that this is hooked up inside of the truck. We wanna check that all of our trailer lights are working perfectly. I always suggest going around and checking your lights because not only can it cause an accident, but you could also potentially get a ticket. So that's important. Now let's go ahead and talk about these chains. And I love the way that Ameritrail does these because they're kind of like a bungee type chain. So they stay up off of the ground. Something that I like doing with my safety chains, is I like crossing them. And the reason why I like crossing them is say for example, if this tongue were to fall off of our ball here, the coupler would fall right in between the chains and it would essentially be supporting the trailer up off of the ground. So that's why we cross these up. There's another little thing I would like to add about actually connecting these to the truck. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure to attach them from underneath. These have a little safety clip here so you don't have to worry as much. But say for example, you didn't have this safety clip. Say you were to hit a bump and you were to attach them this way, there always is potential that the safety chain could pop up and disconnect. So we wanna make sure that we're doing it from underneath like that so there's no issues. And last but not least, we're gonna hook up this little safety wire here. If this gets pulled, this is like a little safety feature that'll lock up the brakes, but hopefully none of us ever get there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off the cover and we're gonna show you how we get this thing ready in order to take it to the boat ramp. We uh, get all of our covers built by the captain's tailor down here in South Florida. He does a fantastic job. As you can see, this cover fits this boat like a glove all the way over. Um, our tower here and you know we keep our covers on even through hurricanes you can see we have all these little safety clips here and what we're going to do is we're just going to unclip this entire cover roll it up and it's a step that's not favorable but it's always such a nice feeling when you pull the cover off and the boat just looks so brand new and clean so the cover is off and as you can see the boat is just as clean as when i left it and it's still nice and shiny and it'll continue to be that way because once you keep your boat out of the sun, I mean, you'll just see it. You're finished, everything lasts that much longer. And if you notice, my hatches are open. Every single time I put the cover on the boat, I open up the hatches to let all that water dry out, let everything air out, so that way there's never any mold or mildew inside the boat. So whenever your wife or girlfriend gets inside, she doesn't have to worry about all of her belongings getting all nasty. So that's how we keep everything nice and clean here. And um, another thing that we do, is we keep our boat connected to our power pole charge and we just always keep it connected to power so that way when we get in the boat we always make sure our batteries are charged up so if you guys haven't heard of the power pole charge i definitely suggest checking it out but last but not least what we're going to do is we're going to trim up our engine that way we're not hitting anything on our way to the boat ramp and at this point we are good to go and ready to tow so let's do it more things before we go just got to close up the gates so the dogs don't get out and uh, another thing to add is the fact that we keep our boats behind a fence it actually lowers our insurance tremendously so we were able to lower our insurance so much to the point where this gate actually paid for itself by lowering the insurance but the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure our trailer is level and we're going to be heading to the boat ramp so we're getting there but the last thing we got to do just measure out our trailer i've done this in the past but i'm just going to show you guys just so everybody can learn at home that's 13 inches right there in the front and then we have 13 inches here in the back so that's perfectly level right there and the reason why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that our axles 
are as even as possible here on the road. We want to make sure that we don't have too much lift in the front, but we also want to make sure that our trailer is not on a decline. Ultimately, just making sure that we can get this trailer to last as long as possible. Tires, hubs, axles, everything included. But let's go ahead and finally get on the road. So we're on our way. I gotta tell you what, I'm feeling good right now, man. Trailer is perfectly balanced, got all of our lights working perfect, and I'm making sure to just take it real slow, stay nice and relaxed. All right, so as you can see, we pulled over here right in front of the park. And the reason why we didn't go inside of the park to the boat ramp is just because in order to do this process right, what you want to do is you want to load your boat under your straps. As you can see, we have these beautiful retractable straps here that come on the Ameritrail. And we also want to put in our plug. We want to make sure that once we get to the boat ramp, everything is done. The worst thing that you could do is pull up to the boat ramp, start loading in all your food, all your belongings, take off your straps, put in your plug. What you want to do is make sure all the work is done before you actually get to the boat ramp. So once we pull inside the park, the only thing that I have to do is just back this thing down, remove the trailer. That way we can do this process as fast as possible. Nobody's upset and everybody else can get their boats up inside of the boat ramp. We don't have to do anything other than back this boat down the ramp, and this is probably the most nerve-wracking part for people, but I can promise you, after you do it a couple times, it becomes very easy. And the most important part of all of this, I would say, is just knowing how to back up a trailer. We do this a lot, and this is second nature for us at this point, especially with the boat ramp that we're at specifically. And something to keep in mind is all boat ramps are different. They all have different angles, different declines and inclines. So the way that you load and launch your boat at one boat ramp may be completely different from the other. And ultimately what you need to figure out, and you'll figure this out as time goes on. Luckily we've done this a time or two with this specific configuration here at this boat ramp. So we're just gonna back down to that sweet spot. And once we get there, we're gonna unhook and power off. And like I said, you know, we figured this out over time. I just know where that perfect little happy medium is just by being able to look at this whole thing visually. But if you notice, I tried to back up as close as possible here to the dock. And the reason why is so that way I could just step right onto the boat, step on my spare tire, and then we're gonna get down here to the tongue and then we're going to unhook our safety chain and then undo this right here you got to be careful here because sometimes the boat may have some momentum built up as it wants to go down so we're just going to release it nice and slow unhook and this ameritrail um, it's what's called a power on power off trailer and the reason why it's set up that way it's just so it's as easy as possible um, to offload the boat from the trailer and it's also as easy as possible to load it on the trailer. So as you can see, the boat's still sitting here on the trailer. So that way we don't have to back our truck down very far. We're gonna crank up, trim down a little bit. And if we hit that sweet spot perfect, we should be able to just give this boat a little bit of throttle and it should come right off the trailer. Boom, just like that. And now I'm actually going to dock up on the other side. And the reason why is because this dock is kind of nasty. It's got a lot of barnacles built up onto the pilings. And that's definitely going to scratch up my rub rail. So I always like parking on the side where the wind is pushing the boat off of the dock. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop back on the boat and I'm gonna use my cleat to tie off around this piling, just like that. We're gonna do the same exact thing up in the front. Just as easy as that right there. 
And then that way we don't have to worry about barnacles, nails, all kinds of other things dinging up the side of the boat. The wind's just pushing it right off beside the dock here. Now this next part here is pretty self-explanatory. We're just pulling the trailer out of the water. Personally, um, I like putting the truck in four wheel drive just to make sure we don't slip. And that's highly suggested if you guys are gonna be towing. We're gonna pull forward and we're gonna show you some preventative maintenance to just keep everything on your trailer working as best and as long as possible. All right, so as you can see, we're here perfect between the lines. And this is important because we wanna make sure that we're leaving room for everyone else and we can make sure that another truck and trailer can come and park in this spot. Another thing is too, I got my little sprayer here. I have a solution water mixed with some salt clean made by Stark. So we're just gonna take our little solution and we're just gonna get in there real quick, especially our brakes, our Kodiak disc brakes. This is one of the many things that make an Ameritrail a fantastic trailer is just having these Kodiak disc brakes on here. So we wanna make sure to take care of those really, really well. And then we're gonna move on to the inside of the brakes, making sure to hit the hub the disc, the calipers, all this galvanized steel. And the biggest thing with a lot of these components, like I mentioned, they're made out of galvanized steel and over time these will corrode. So it's important to hit these as fast as possible. The rest of the trailer, all the aluminum, that's not going to corrode as quickly. So we're gonna hit that later on um, at the end of the day or when we do clean the boat and rinse the trailer just because we don't necessarily need to hit that as fast. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the silicone spray and we're just gonna spray a little bit, not a lot. And the reason why we're spraying this here on the bunks is just to give it a little bit of uh, lubrication so that way there's not as much friction when we're backing this boat off the trailer and we're putting it on. It's also gonna help the carpet on these bunks to last that much longer. All right, so fast forward and we just had an amazing day on the boat, just got back to the boat ramp and now we gotta load the boat back up onto the trailer. And a couple important things, make sure when you're coming down the channel, you have all of your dock lines ready. These dock lines are specifically made by Waves RX. We actually have a promo code down in the video description um, so you can get a discount on these, but also make sure to have your truck keys ready. Um, just have everything that you potentially need, maybe even a cell phone so you can communicate with the person that's here on the boat. But in a perfect world, you know, somebody's driving the boat, another person's driving the trailer, you back up the trailer, the other person pulls the boat up onto the trailer. But unfortunately, that's not always the circumstances. So we're gonna show you how to do it if you're here by yourself. So we have these really long guide poles on this Ameritrail here. When I say guide poles, they're actual poles that stick up in the air. And not only are they great for loading the boat on the trailer, but they're also great for backing up. So you can actually see the trailer if you're trying to look in your rear view mirror. But I like using my mirrors in a combination um, with looking behind me in the manner that I'm doing it right now. But at this point, what I'll do is I'll start making a hard cut. We're gonna go down real nice and easy. Looking in my mirrors. If you're not comfortable with your mirrors, just look behind you or do it however, which way you're comfortable. We're just gonna go down real nice and slow. And at this point, we're essentially just back in that trailer right up underneath that boat. So now that we've gotten to this point, what we can do, we can completely untie this boat from the dock because we basically have it halfway on there just by backing up the trailer underneath the boat. Those guide poles are gonna hold it right in place. Now at this point, the boat's basically already set up on the trailer. And this is where that silicone spray really comes in handy that we had just put on the bunks. And like we said, this is just a power on, power off trailer. So all we have to do is just give it a little bit of gas, hit that roller. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna come off the throttle, turn off the engine, Hop around here. And we're just gonna chain it up, tighten down on the winch, and it's seriously that simple when you have the right trailer. Just like that. 
And all we have to do is just pull forward. What's nice about this truck, as soon as it feels that it's rolling backwards, it'll automatically engage the parking brake. And then as soon as I put it in drive and I pull forward, it disengages for me, which is really nice. But I always like taking this process very slow, just the same exact way as you would if you were pulling forward. We're actually not on four wheel drive right now. We're slipping a little bit, but the same exact thing that we did when we pulled in, we're going to leave the park. And ultimately what we're going to do is we're gonna offload, you know, anything that we have to do after the fact, we're gonna make sure to do it out of the way of all of the congestion here at the boat ramp. So now that we're out of all the congestion, we're not blocking anything up. We're just gonna go ahead put on our straps, pull our plug, and then this is where you do whatever else you gotta do. But the whole point is here, guys, be safe, take care of your stuff, and be considerate of others. And then obviously, once we get back to the house, we're gonna wash this thing up, flush the engine, rinse down the trailer, and that's something for a whole nother video. But I wanna tell you guys how much I appreciate you guys been getting a lot of questions from people lately asking about our clothing brand. What does Avail stand for? And Avail means to have the advantage or help or benefit. And that's what we're all about. We try to do that for you guys in each and every video. So if you guys enjoyed the video, give us a like, drop us a comment, support the clothing line, and support all of these awesome companies that are supporting us as well. So until next time, see you guys then. Thanks so much.